Okay, welcome. First up on the agenda from Ogazan about squid versus squid release branch. Yeah, just wanted to get a better understanding on uh, like how we create like candidate releases and eventually G8. I think for squid, 192.0 is the one that's being uh, worked on right now. Uh, the next release candidate for squid. Let's say if we have a two dot one down the road, uh, so like, like what makes it for a bug or some PR to be qualified to get in the squid release branch? I think we are creating the release candidates on squid release branch, not on squid. Uh, so just wanted to understand the general workflow of uh, like creating releases. Uh, I guess this question is about. Yeah, um, and I know that we have some document about the release process, um, and the the dash release branch is kind of just a detail of that process. At some point, we're satisfied with testing on the squid branch, for example, and then we fork squid release just um, so that the release process uses that as the, the base. Um, and then I guess when we eventually want to do 19.2.1, I believe that we'll fork squid release off of the latest squid at that point. So are we going to, let's say for 2.1, are we going to rebase uh, squid release into like squid, like because there's quite a bit of delta between two right now. Uh, yeah. Okay. But is there any plan for the two that one or not yet? Or is there gonna be? Uh, What's the right? I mean, we process? we haven't finished the two dot um, release yet. And then I think the next the next release will be the final Quincy, and then we'll probably do the next reef before we revisit Squid. So I would expect it to cycle that way. Yeah, sounds good. Um, just a follow-up on that question, Casey. So by default, today when we create those backports, the backports go to the squid branch, right? So what is the criteria that bugs if you want them to be in the release branch then? It's correct that backports should target squid. Um, in general, you shouldn't need to worry about the squid release branch um, when we go to start the next release that will get rebased. Oh, OK. Um, so just getting things into squid is enough. Oh, OK. My understanding was that now that we have 19.2.0 as released, the 2.1 would only cherry pick few PRs, and it won't be the entire squid. So what you're trying to say is the next 19.2.1 would be the actual, the day when it is cut, it will be cut from the squid branch. Basically, it will be rebased. The squid. 2.1 would be rebased from Squid, right? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. In in terms of 19.2.0, I th I think it was a bit unfortunate that um, we had we have been piling up a lot of backports on the Squid branch that didn't make 19.2.0 because we cut the second release candidate and then. After that, we only cherry picked a couple blockers on top for 19.2.0. So a lot of things that did merge for Squid didn't end up making this release. So they'll they'll have to wait until 19.2.1. Um, if it helps, I can try to find links to the release process stuff that talks about how this branching works. 
Yeah, that would be great if. Yeah. Or I can follow up on on Slack with links that I find. Any other thoughts or questions on on release process? So we are still in the process of 2.0 at this moment and 2.1. So do we have any cadence for that? Like it's like a monthly or it all depends on are there any critical issues and we need to release like what big dates that we need to release 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, just curious. Um, so we generally cycle between the different stable releases. As I mentioned, we'll we'll do Quincy and Reef before we revisit Squid, most likely, unless the 19.2.0 release has some um, urgent bugs that we need to um, push out a hat fix for. But even then, I th a hat fix would probably not rebase all of Squid. Um, in terms of the cycling, I think the target is to put out a point release every six weeks or so. But lately, we've been really bad about that. All of our releases have been pushed back because of various issues with lab or, or bugs. So it's hard to give um, solid dates for any of this. Um, and the next Quincy release in particular, I think, is going to be the last point release that we do. Quincy has already passed its estimated EOL. So Quincy is probably going to contain a lot more and may take longer to validate everything. Do we have any release notes for Quincy that are going to be released in this uh, in this release? Um, you could look at the Quincy branch, the pending release notes file to see what's, um, what's pending there. It's not until we're ready to cut the release that we actually go and format the, the release notes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, should we move on? Artem, I know you wanted to continue discussion on the bug that we mentioned last week. Um, uh, we can, but uh, I don't have anything um, specifically new to tell you. Uh, I haven't found uh, the root cause of it. The, the root cause is uh, racing, but uh, I don't know how to fix it. The general solution uh, I, can, I can see the general solution that would uh, fix all the race conditions because there are no two-phase commits uh, in Ceph nowadays. Uh, we cannot use transactions uh, between different Redis objects and uh, that's unfortunate. And I think that Locking the object is not uh, is not a good solution because it's it it will uh, it will cause the performance to go down significantly. Yeah, I agree. Um, we absolutely should allow concurrent modifications. What I remember from last week, though, is that deletes seem to be misbehaving and that they were passing in zero for the the pool epoch i think it was called uh yeah i tried uh, different uh i tried setting different epochs uh, for different operations uh, uh even canceling the other operations but uh, it's causing different kind of problems and um for this situation, like uh, put plus delete, we can solve it. Uh, for example, if we cancel the put or somehow make uh, these operations in order, for force them in, to be in order, 
but otherwise, mm, I don't know. For now, uh, as I understand, uh, OSD can process these operations in any order, uh, but uh, because it has different queues for different connections. But uh, these operations uh, at least should be uh, serialized inside the placement group. Maybe then it will be it will occur less and but uh, as I said, it won't uh, solve it as a whole. Well, I mean we right we have logic in CLS that uses that epoch number um, for for ordering, but for some reason the delete case is sending zero and I think that's the part that I that I want to understand. I think it sends zero because uh, when uh, it fetched the object version, no, it should not. Hmm. I tried setting it uh, to like uh, way higher than it should be, like int max, uh, and it still happens. So something is uh, it cannot be solved on on this level we need uh, like a real two phase commit for example um, when we call the prepare modification we should uh, somehow record the state and when we call complete, we should uh, check uh, if it can uh, be completed. But uh, what if a user calls uh, put object several times uh, in a rapid succession? This will still break. Uh, we can. Uh, it can break in a different way. We can have one object in the index and another object in the data pool. So the the way that racing puts should work is that we get the epoch number from the write operation on the head object that gives us a essentially a version number on that pool or PG. Um, yeah, but uh, and, and so the CLS RGW is essentially accepting the the highest version number as the the success. Uh, probably yes. Okay, uh, I'll note it somewhere and try to check later. Okay, so yeah, I I think that it's just the delete that's the gap there, and I'm not sure why the delete isn't giving us the epoch number. Um, this should be checked. I don't. Yes, should be checked too. Yeah, I'll I'll try to poke at that later today and uh, share any updates in the tracker issue. Okay, I'll check it. I'll write it in the uh, in the issue. Probably uh, we will be able to solve it at least partially. Sounds good. All right, thanks for following up on that. Any other topics for today? So for this one, uh, I, like I wasn't here last week. So is this like this is reports for version 16, 19 Pacific. 
like given the root cause, uh, is this issue like susceptible in uh, like other releases? This Quick version uh, is reported to be in versions from 16 to the master branch. So it's like... Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think we've seen other reports of um, bucket index inconsistencies that, that look like the same thing. Um, doesn't look like this has related issues, though. If I find other trackers that look related, I'll link them. Uh, probably other can be linked because uh... I can check uh, the FASA and um, see if I can achieve uh, a mismatch between index pool and data pool, if you want. I thought that's essentially what your, your tracker was reporting. Mm. The tracker was reporting uh, a specific one when uh, uh, a delete uh, happens r right uh, after put. But uh, I think it can be uh, several put operations can cause uh, the same, almost the same issue. OK. The the ones that I remember were also related to deletes, essentially that a, a deleted object was still present in the index. Um, and I and I think that just normal racing puts are, are working fine because the epoch numbers are right. So I'm hoping that it's just the delete case that's that's broken here. Okay, but I'll still check it because it's fast. Mm. Sounds good. All right. Well, Zena, I see that you joined and you have a couple outstanding PRs about multi-site stuff. Is there anything that you want to discuss while you're here? Uh, who multi-site? Sorry, that was a question for Sina. Oh, OK. Can you hear me? Sorry, my microphone was, I guess. I hear you now, yeah. Oh, OK, hi. sorry. Sorry, hi. Uh, so yeah, I just recently opened uh, one PR regarding uh, data replication between Zoom groups. I just wanted to know that if you had a chance to take a look and see what you think about it. I know that there was some uh, problems with the load that it could cause for the non-multi-site you know, uh, multi -site clusters. But uh, currently, what I did was uh, to make sure that the bucket has any sync uh, pipes enabled and then ask for logging. And that sync pipes probably can be cached, and then ca that could be uh, cheaper than what it was before. So that was the first impression of doing this between Zoom groups. And there was some other uh, PRs, as you mentioned, about uh creating bucket deleting a bucket that uh, they are broken right now when we have two zoom groups and uh, the bucket is in zoom group a and zoom group b wants to delete a bucket or create a bucket uh, so anything i can probably here clarify i would be happy to do that or discuss okay um yeah and the second topic about forwarding between zone groups um, currently, all of our multi-zone group tests are disabled, mm -hmm. um, but you can still write test cases um, that'll run locally. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's hard for me to know whether something is correct unless we have a test case that's exercising it. So if if you could add those, then that that would help a lot. Uh, sure, I, I'll try to do add it to the QA probably, if that's the right place. Um, it would be the multi-site tests under test RGW, RGW multi. Mm -hmm. I think that um, Shilpa had a test case in the 
in the create bucket PR that you saw earlier today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll try to do that. But is this for both uh, create bucket and delete bucket, or is it just for the delete bucket? And for delete bucket, I just opened the issue. I, I'm I'm not sure what would be the process of deleting a bucket from a non-master zone group to the master zone group. Yeah. Um, bucket deletion is tricky because it has to check that the bucket is empty first. Yeah. Um, and I know that Shilpa has been doing a lot of work on cleanup of deleted buckets, and she's introduced some changes to how that works too. So, um, Shilpa, do you have any idea how that would, um, how like multiple zone groups would affect that? Um, yeah, I'm not sure about multiple zone groups. Um, I think we could turn on multiple zone groups now that we have the uh, the data sync crash that's been taken care of, um, and then we can run it through uh, the two zone group configuration. That would be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which so, PR um, is this again? I can send the link here. There's a there's a master PR, and then the links are there. So this one is one of them. And uh, this uh, for this is for the create uh, bucket create, but for uh, bucket deletion, I have no PRs because I don't know what the flow is to be look like. So I just open this issue. Maybe you can comment on that. Okay. So I can... Yeah, I'll take it up and comment there. Thanks. Yeah, this is the issue. Okay. Yeah. And there is one more regarding the uh, pipe creation that the user ID is not being uh, honored by the master zoom group because we are not using the effective owner. Uh, let me send the PR maybe that would help. Uh, this PR, uh, when we create sync pipes through the put bucket uh, replication, we use the system account that has been forwarded to the master zone group. That's why it would never work because that user doesn't have permission to the bucket when it's on user mode. So we probably need to use the owner rather than the user ID. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll have to take a look at the tracker and the uh, and the PRs uh, because I'm not very certain of what put bucket replication uh, requires in terms of system user, in terms of user uh, permissions. So um, yeah, I'll take a look and comment on the PR. Thank you. And just for the bucket replication between zone groups, this PR, uh, I would be happy to take some feedbacks if you could, so to know that where we can improve if this is going to work at all. I tried I tried to test it. It seems to be fine. I mean, it it works as expected. So the buckets that doesn't have pipes do not lock anything. The buckets that had pipes lock things and other zones have been replicating if they have any pipe related. So kind of like the way that it could be efficient, but it still has the inefficiency of every zone would process the in shard entries that they might not have any pipes that are related. Uh, so I'm not sure about that part that if it's gonna be expensive when it scales or not. So happy to take comments if possible, would be good. Yeah, that, that need to pull and read all of the data log entries. Um, does sound expensive, but I don't. I don't think we've ever tried to measure um, exactly what that costs. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I what I thought about because these uh, sync pipes are kind of like uh, index uh, radius objects that can be cached. So I thought that this could be uh, eliminated by caching, and then that goes, you know, uh, fast. But uh, but regarding the processing entries by other zone, zones, that you know, yeah, that's that's something that is just a useless process by them. But it's just uh, processing the entries. It just go through the bucket name try to find the pipe if there's no pipes it just stop it immediately so it's just a background job doing nothing but could that cause a problem this is something that i couldn't find an answer for that i'm happy to take comments uh, i tried to paste the code like that was trying in the in my comments if you see that Yeah, um, it, essentially that would skip bucket sync on anything that wasn't relevant, but it would still have to process all of the data log entries to to figure out what is relevant and what isn't. Yeah, and that in, that includes you know constantly pulling for new data log entries from I guess each of the zones in the source zone group. Yeah, what, uh, so yeah, it tries all the zones available in the period and track all charts and yeah, do this thing. I couldn't think of any other ways to do that. If you have any hints, then <laughs> happy to take a look because that would be a great uh, feature in terms of achieving that uh, AWS model for replication. So we could have location constraint uh, Per bucket and have the data replication per bucket, which different ro locations rather than all in one zoom group. Uh, yeah, but both uh, both would probably cause the same scale issue. If we go with one zoom group, many zones, that's still the same issue if we scale. So this, yeah, agreed. Well, I do know that there is some interest from users and customers for that cross-region replication. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's let's follow up on the PR. OK, thank you very much. So yeah, that would be all. Thank you. Sina, what version are you using for multi-site? Uh, currently, we are on Reef 18.2.2. We're trying to backboard these PRs for business needs, but we try to not scale as uh, that much until we get feedbacks from developers. <laughs> Otherwise, we might end up with a pass issue. <laughs> okay, thank you. We mm -hmm. tested uh, multi-site on like 17 something and uh, had uh, some problems. Uh, some objects went missing haven't investigated uh, deeply into that, but... Mm -hmm. No, we haven't enabled I... it. We want to enable it using multi-zoom groups rather than one zoom group. But yeah, that's what the initial work is about. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, and in terms of multi-site, the Reef release has a whole lot of changes that are difficult to backport because it added the... Um, the resharding support. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I've seen this uh, in the release notes. Yeah, and we, we did do a whole lot of stabilization work around um, improving consistency between zones that didn't end up on Quincy, unfortunately. So, uh, so if this topic is over, I, I had one more topic, if I may. Okay. Please do. Uh, so I see Marcus is here. I just wanted to follow up if copy object with for encrypted objects are going to be soon <laughs> supported. What's the status? Is there any hopes? I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite catch that. Uh, which which tracker issue are you talking about? 
for when uh, for copy object API, when source is encrypted for with SSE S3 or SSE. Oh, can... copy object encryption. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, um, I, I have a branch that I'm intending to push out for upstream. Mm -hmm. um, it's out of date, so I've probably got a three-phase effort. First phase is push that the branch out as I've got it today. Second thing will be to rebase it onto a current version of main. And the third thing is I have a separate standalone Python um, script to test out copy, copy object encryption and its associated stuff. And I want to try to get that incorporated into Tithology in some form. Okay, great. Thank you. Just because nowadays most of the people are using encryption and this copy is not working, it's kind of like a deal breaker. <laughs> so just yeah, no, no, I, I, I understand people want it. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, I mean, all of it, well, it's, not, it's, not, it's not just that. I mean, we've, we've, we pushed the PRs and, and, and right. Is there any miss, is there any missing functionality upstream at this point? Um, well, what I've got is out of date at this point. And well, I have what I, I need to update the, the pull request for upstream basically. Well, that should be done immediately. That's that really is an expectation. Whether it gets merged, you know, is, is a matter of other things, but but being able to right, to, for, to incorporate in, you know, we 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 have I should apologize for saying this publicly, we we have a version that that, that qualifies and it should be upstream. Yeah, no, I agree. All right, eager to see that. Any other topics for today? Not from me. Uh, probably we can discuss a little bit uh, indexes again. Uh, I've been thinking uh, from our previous talk about it and um, noticed that uh, maybe we can uh, change the format how we store indexes. Uh, nowadays we use uh, hash indexes, but uh, probably prefix-based indexes uh, can, uh, can find its place in the Rados Gateway too, because they bring some advantages for users. For example, it can be resharded uh, separately and have constant time resharding. And uh, index uh, and listing can be done uh, faster and more efficient because objects uh, may be uh, stored uh, in order. Uh, is there any blockers that uh, that make makes this uh, solution inappropriate. Well, well, no. Uh, Eric Avancic is working on something that sounds like what you described. Although there might be design adjustments you'd you'd prefer. Um, okay. It, uh, are you doing it uh, publicly in some PRs? Uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. We we would not do it. Non publicly, so I, I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to see if he's available to join this call right now, but I don't know if that's the case. But we can move the discussion to it to, to further discussion to email list. But yeah, we're we're we're, we're you know exactly what, you, what you're describing is I think what we're attempting to do is is is, is create a create a version of the current index lot structures that that operates in a, with the with the shards in order and it and and and, and, allow, and and allows splitting and merging um, of individual shared boundaries based based on some lookup function rather rather than rather than a hat partition because indeed all the things you mentioned are correct <laughs> yeah sounds great sounds great yeah, I, i'd like to have some conversation about it and uh, jo join probably join some uh, and make some efforts into this okay let well, I me mean, let's i don't know how to, I, mean, I don't read Cyrillic, um, but if, if I had a way to uh, okay. maybe, link you up, and yes. I, I, mean, I can we can we can post maybe in in the SFL list and see where, where it goes, or if you or if you can reach out somehow, I would be able to pass your name to Eric. 
Uh, okay, I'll uh, write you my email uh, real quick. Thank you. Um, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll try. I'll try to, to help out. Thanks. Thanks very much. I'm glad, I'm glad you're glad you're glad you're here, and we'll see what you can do to um, cooperate. But Thank I think you. we're talking about doing something. You know, we're we're working on this something now. I don't know how, how advanced it is, but but we were, we'd be delighted to have you help if if you can. And and we will. Our, our aim our aim is to do something quickly. So we we, we know this is needed. Apologize, it's taken a while. And we we solved lots of other lots lots of other issues with concurrency and other and other dimensions of. Index yes, system. yes. This is, uh, and this is an idea we should have had before. And probably multi site again. <laughs> Okay, I I don't have any new uh, topics for today. All right, last call. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Yeah, bye-bye.